There. Well, this is exactly like Ozu. I'm very, <laughs> <laughs> very pleased with your idea. Okay. <laughs> so what I'd uh, like to do is maybe I wrote out your filmography there, oh. and I just want to make sure that I've got all the documentaries. Um, I did manage to see one, the films division, okay. Yakshagana. Actually, the first one is Myth. The Myth, it yes. Is 67, not 77. Oh, it's 67? Yes. Oh, that was a mistake. So that comes first. That's the first film I did. Okay. And, well, why don't we just go in order, and maybe you can tell me about each one, just briefly. So, the first documentary you made after you set up the cooperative was the myth? No, myth was in, even before, uh, no, the, it was made after the cooperative was set up, but then it was not a, not a documentary. Mm -hmm. It was just an experimental shot, mm -hmm. which uh, was of a duration of 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. So it was not a documentary. This was um, shown in the man and his man and his world. There was a theme oh, given, yeah. and in the uh, Montreal yes. uh, festival in, this, in those days, in 19, 1967, yes. they had a competition. So I had come out of the institute in 1965, and then um, I got this. Uh, a uh, notice from the institute asking me to make a film mm -hmm. of 50 seconds duration so that it can participate in this competition. And this was the very first film I made mm -hmm. with borrowed camera, borrowed stock, <laughs> because I helped someone to make a film here, documentary. Mm -hmm. So there was some uh, balanced footage, raw stock. So practically everything was done uh, by courtesy of the that gentleman who made the short film, whom I helped to make it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was only 50 minutes duration and uh, it was shown in Montreal mm -hmm. in this festival. It was, uh, the theme was man and his world. And I used no words in the film, only music. And mm -hmm. There was hardly any, um, <laughs> any relevance for dialogues there. So I used music and some sound effects. Mm -hmm. I must have seen it. Uh, I'm sure I don't remember it though, but I was at that pavilion at I see. This was, And this film was selected. There were thousands of entries, it seems. Mm -hmm. And this was selected as one of the best 20 films. And mm -hmm. in the Cinematheque in Canada, they have the copy. Oh, they don't, have the copy. You can see them. You can oh, see it. I'll go see it. Yes. <laughs> So then the next one must have been the following year, uh, was that it, and man created? Yes, uh, this was done on the handicrafts. Mm -hmm. uh, this was commissioned uh, by the Handicrafts Corporation here. In Kerala? Yes, by the Department of Industries. So this film was uh, commissioned of, for a duration of five minutes, but when I made it, it became eight minutes. Mm -hmm. um, of course, they, they paid only for the five minutes, did not make any, <laughs> um, in fact, we did not even cover the cost of the production, but all the same, I, I gave them in the form of eight, in the shape of eight minutes duration. And this film went on to win many prizes, national awards, special jury prizes and all that. Then I made a film on family planning. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, which, which was again shown around. It was about a 20 minutes duration. Mm -hmm. Again commissioned job, around the same time in 68. Mm -hmm. After 68, then in 69, I made still uh, one more film for the film station. This was on the, <coughs> on telephones, actually. On this, it was about the introduction uh, of uh, subscriber trunk dialing, STD we call it, oh, yeah. direct dialing uh -huh. of long distances. Family planning had not been for the films division, it was also... It was done for the state, uh, the uh, state. department of family planning. Uh -huh. That was also uh, shown around in uh -huh. the festivals of India and all that. Uh -huh. uh, and by this time the cooperative, the production cooperative was already uh, functioning, was it? In fact, uh, except uh, the film Myth, the first film. All the other films were made under the cooperative's banner. I see. Because I made practically 
practically all the films under the cooperative bank <coughs> so after the telephone film that was 69 then you then i made a film for the life insurance corporation oh yeah <laughs> uh this was again for the film station commissioned by them and on the film was titled the danger at your doorstep the way danger at oh, your doorstep okay. uh, this is about the need for insuring <laughs> one's life So it was a straightforward publicity film. Or? Yes, all these have been not not publicity, direct publicity, but all the same, it is mo- motivational films. Mm-hmm. You you are asked to do a film, and you are given a theme, and you have to satisfy many people mm-hmm. right from the script to the final stage. Mm-hmm. When it is a commission job, you know we don't have the concept of giving you a free hand and then letting you to do what you want. It's not like that. Mm-hmm. At every stage, you know there are. curves and controls and approvals and all mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. so working under that system i don't think i ever enjoyed uh, uh, that any any freedom in making those films especially when you are unknown when you are beginning your career when you have not made a name mm-hmm. it's very difficult to to, to assert yourself mm-hmm. you know no mm-hmm. you <coughs> ideas of um probing into an issue and then coming out with your point of view in the film you know that doesn't uh, there is no scope for that in a commission job mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i i i personally don't think i made any documentary or short mm-hmm. uh, where i enjoyed the complete freedom of expression i don't mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. no I, i and it is wrong to expect that kind of freedom in a commission job for sure yeah. <laughs> Yeah. and also i was in a way i was uh, uh not very particular about subjects because at this in 1965 when we set up the cooperative uh it became not only really a matter of my choice and making films but then it also also became a matter of uh sustaining the cooperative so i had to necessarily make films Mm-hmm. to keep the cooperative going mm-hmm. to you know this this mm-hmm. became a f- uh, bigger end than the the making of the film itself yes so mm-hmm. i wouldn't say i made big compromises but then i would say i, I did not have the freedom of choice in that sense mm-hmm. and i it was all right for me as long as i was handling films as long as i was making films because it was also a, a process of learning no because when i passed out of the institute i had learned theory about cinematography i mean i mean photography you know, handling camera i had uh, i had known all branches about film making uh, editing uh, sound recording and all that but then uh actual doing you know actual handling of the camera so this part was actually i you know and i uh, it, it came like you had to do it yourself like you know although we had formed this cooperative cooperative was all the same a poor it was a cooperative of uh, people who had no money mm-hmm. so together also we had no money mm-hmm. so and there is in fact one film which i did i was shooting for nearly 8 years and completed it much later in 1970 it was completed in 77 this was a film on the in and the hydroelectric project mm-hmm. called idiki the main main source of our power supply is yes. the idiki project mm-hmm. <coughs> this film just because you know i i we could, we could not cooperate could not afford to get a cameraman those days there was no filmmaking activity here everybody was settled in madras so if you want a camera you had to bring the camera from madras mm-hmm. you had to bring the uh, cameraman from madras assistants from madras this was the situation so if there were if there was a camera available then you had to assemble all these people it would have been big expense but cooperative couldn't afford so what i did was every year i would go at every stage and not only every year at every stage of uh, construction of this dam i would go there and and cover the thing you know the uh, happening there mm-hmm. myself mm-hmm. so i was doing also the camera work of this film and this is a very long film I, uh, it's quite interesting in the sense uh the whole project right from the survey of the project to the final 
Mm -hmm. uh, completion of the thing was done over a period of eight years. My God. Yes. I'd like to see this that. It's a one hour long film. Yes. Was this commissioned by the... the, the uh, by the State uh, Electricity Board. Uh-huh. Yes. They, uh, and it was shown and it was released on the day in all theatres of Kerala, in main, especially the district headquarters. Uh, it, this film was shown um, as a special uh, attraction on the day of the inauguration of the project. So this film had much more of a personal... Yes, uh, it was, uh, I put much more into it in that sense, mm -hmm. yes. And invariably I, I recorded my sounds myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I do, you know, in fact, on, uh, on all my feature films. If you ask me where I enjoy complete freedom of making a film, all my five films, I enjoyed full freedom. Mm -hmm. There were no controls. So if there is any, any flaws, any, any, any defects in it, I own it up. Mm -hmm. I own it up. I cannot blame anybody. Mm -hmm. So all my five films uh, that I have made uh, so far, I have been the master. Mm -hmm. uh, not only in matters of decision, but in the matters of execution itself. It's quite a rare luxury in uh, India, isn't it, to have this uh, kind of complete I, I, control? But then I could, I could, I, I did earn it because every film of mine has been um, uh, even also commercially been viable. Mm -hmm. In the sense, each film has brought back the investment. Mm -hmm. Some films have made profits. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my producers have not lost any money on any of my films. Mm -hmm. So, um, there is no question of anybody interfering. Uh, they, by now, they know that I don't like it and I won't accept it. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, making and all these... Here also, even, even, about the, even right from the theme to the treatment, everything I do myself. So, none of my films is based on anybody else's work. No, mm -hmm. I, you know, right from the idea to the final film, it's all mine. <coughs> so setting up the cooperative, in a way, was a kind of preparation for this later kind of uh, control, wasn't it? Uh, laying the groundwork for the being able to... The cooperative uh, had a big role in the sense. Um, those days, immediately after uh, I passed out of the institute, um, in fact, wh even while I was undergoing training at the institute, I had realized that the kind of attitudes I developed while under undergoing the training, I could foresee that it wouldn't be accepted by mm -hmm. the commercial industry. Mm -hmm. and, they, you, it, and it would be difficult to get uh, regular finance mm -hmm. from regular sources of finance. So <coughs> there, were, there were three, four others uh, um, uh, working their life. Um, uh, I'm studying there, uh, like uh, um, uh, somebody from the cinematography section in the DFTI, and then somebody from the sound department, somebody from the editing. You know, so we formed a unit. Mm -hmm. we, 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 this was the first effort uh, made at the institute to have a unit of the students themselves. Mm -hmm. When they go out, they work together. This was the idea. So, this was the first time we were organizing ourselves into a unit, and we said. Once we pass out, we work, we'll work together. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, uh, this was, this, and it was named, the unit, this was called uh, Chitralekha Film Unit. I see. Uh, then uh, <coughs> we had a, we said, it won't be like others uh, just wanting to make films, but then this film unit will have a three-pronged approach. Mm -hmm. One will be to produce films. Mm -hmm. That's one, one aim. <coughs> Second is to institute set up film societies and spread the film culture. Third will be the publication of literature mm -hmm. on cinema. Mm -hmm. All this we did. Mm -hmm. We came out for the production, we s production and exhibition of films, we set up the cooperative. Mm -hmm. For propagation of film culture, we set up the film so first film society in Kerala in Trivantrum. And then we helped <coughs> other, so other friends in other towns of Kerala to set up film societies. We gave films, literature. It is a kind of missionary work going mm -hmm. on. And then we also published some literature. From mm -hmm. the beginning itself, we, we published a book called Chitralaya Film uh, Souvenir. There, for the first time, I translated <coughs> many of the Malayalam words, my equivalents of Malayalam equivalents of the terms used in cinema. Oh, really? I have coined most of them. Oh. Yes, now they are in use. Oh, really? <laughs> Very much in use. People don't even realize that this was done like this. So it was put into practice because in every film of ours, mm -hmm. we started using this only. Mm -hmm. So others started following. Okay, we'll start up again. <laughs>
So then comes Chindarambam. Then comes Swayambaram, rather. In fact, uh, before Swayambaram, you need to clip um, your, your microphone again, Adu. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we missed the, lost the windscreen. Where is the mic? It's, it's this little thing. Oh, it's here. Yeah. I saw Swayambaram at this, in this retrospective. I can see why everyone considered it at the time a real groundbreaking film. It's really lovely. Thank you. In, in fact, uh, uh, just before Swayamaram, again, <laughs> I made uh, two long films. Mm -hmm. uh, one again uh, on family planning mm -hmm. and another on rubber cultivation. Which cultivation? Uh, rubber. Rubber? Rubber. Really? So oh. this was titled uh, Romance of Rubber. Uh -huh. It was a 40 minutes film. These were all produced uh, by the state? Uh, uh, yes, by the rubber board. One of them mm -hmm. was by the rubber board, the other was by, by the family planning department again. But and these were long films and the cooperative really made money out of these films. Mm -hmm. Good uh, good margins we got from the production. And that went into the production of Swayamaram. Mm -hmm. That's how the whatever <laughs> uh, compromises we made by way of taking up commission job. It was worth it because all that money was pulled into mm -hmm. the production of the uh, for our first feature film, mm -hmm. that was Swayamaram. And uh, in fact, there was also a small loan, small loan of say, I don't know how will you translate it into um, dollars, but a, a loan of lakh and fifty thousand rupees. Lakh means you know. Uh, Ten thousand. Uh, uh, hundred thousand. Yes. Okay. Yes. Small amount, yeah. but then this was taken as loan. Yes, I don't want, I didn't want to interrupt you. You were saying something about Sayamaram. Well, it just seems that this pattern of making commissioned bread and butter documentaries in order to finance in independent features is, is, is characteristic of this part of your career, but it's also quite common with some of the other new directors around India, isn't it? Uh, it seems to be a that is fundamental true. pattern. That's true. And also we have no... Um, in the film distribution or the state uh, departments where they wanted a kind of that kind of publicity, propaganda or motivational films to be made. They were absolutely monopolistic in their operation in the sense if somebody made a film independently, at least in the past, I'm not talking about the present, now there is an awareness mm -hmm. being created, there are at least a couple of filmmakers in the country who are making films they want, mm -hmm. the way they want, and then they are bold enough to make the films even if they run into censor problems and those mm -hmm. things then still those films get made and, uh, you know, things are improving now because, uh, and also there is a lot of awareness on the part of the new filmmakers. And, um, um, <coughs> but then, you know, our, we had many, very many problems, you know, in the sense, in 65 I passed out of the Film Institute. The Institute started in 61. At that time, um, no one in the film industry or in the, even in the government thought that we could work independently. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, the idea of training in cinema was something, you know, uh, they thought was absolutely superfluous. Mm -hmm. What was needed was to be under, be the understudy of someone in the industry and then you, over the years, you learn the craft and then uh, you also make, establish the contacts with the right kind of people mm -hmm. and get sponsored, you know. This was the kind of regular practice which was there. But then the Film Institute itself was something uh, really, you know, uh, it was kind of an anathema, <laughs> you know. So we had to struggle on very many fronts. One was that this fix, fixed the notion about, or the allergy uh, for regular formal training in, in cinema. And then on the other side, somebody knew and, uh, and we, are, we were almost aliens at that time to the, the, the organized film industry. And then even for those institutions which would have otherwise uh, sponsored you, you know, in fact, even it was not very easy even to get my first commission job. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was three years after I passed out the institute that I made a commission, uh, a, a, a contract to make a documentary.
Mm -hmm. now, well, it was sheer struggle in between. Was this the time when the um, late 60s, what was the government in Kerala? I can't remember. Was it, it, it wasn't the, 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 the left six, front, was it? It was the left front. So 67 they came into power. So was this maybe one of the reasons they were more open to commissioning films from independence? Or? I don't. In fact, there is n I can't make any difference between the left or the other front in this matter. They are I absolutely see. equal. Mm -hmm. They are... Um, I don't think any, any one of them can take credit for anything because mm -hmm. they have been absolutely mindless <laughs> uh, when it came to the question of uh, producing films. But then basically these departments of family planning, these are central funds mm -hmm. allotted by the center mm -hmm. and then they, have, they are given money to produce these films. So there is no separate policy in that. You know. So after Swayamvaram, um, I want to return to your features later and maybe talk a little bit yeah. about them, but let's just proceed with the chronology. But again, in, in Swayamvaram, you can see the the influence of the uh, documentary work I have Oh, done. certainly, yes. Because I think I have a, a very important influence on my work is the, is the struggle I have gone through. Mm -hmm. And you see, look, even after getting trained in uh, two disciplines like script writing and direction, I don't think I, I became a. Uh, I, I, but it, I don't think I became a complete filmmaker in the sense I had complete control on everything, until I had made a few films, mm -hmm. uh, and until I had handled the camera myself, until I had uh, recorded the sounds myself. Because there's again some very significant thing about. I forgot to mention you. I made I made a film for UNICEF mm -hmm. in 1969. Mm -hmm. uh, this was on the on the nutrition program. This was a, a film, a um, long film, about uh, 45 minutes long. And when, when I said, in mat uh, when, it, when, when it came to the question of payment, I said, I don't want payment, give me in kind. What I asked for was a Nagra recorder, <laughs> <laughs> which they gave. And this became a very important element of my work. This is what I was coming to say. Then mm -hmm. with the Nagra, I learned how to operate it, and I started recording sound. Mm -hmm. So you, in fact, first film, Soyamaram, had synchronous sound recorded on location, the, you know, on that film. I was going to ask you about sound, actually, yes. because the sound in that film has a much more naturalistic texture than some of the, 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 the post-synchronized sound in the later features, yes. doesn't it? Yes. That also became a limitation. Because yes. this uh, sound on location, I found it was very limiting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, it was, there were sounds which I did not want. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get at naturalism, you know, mm -hmm. every time I make a film. I was, in fact, coming, uh, getting out of it. Well, this is <laughs> what I gathered <laughs> when I saw yes. several of these films. And, and I had a lot of trouble um, when I was uh, editing the film because there were a lot of sounds which I did not want there. For instance, the crow. Mm -hmm. It's a crow is ubiquitous, you know, it is there everywhere, mm -hmm. where you want it or not. Even in light, the crow will be sound will be heard, uh, which I did not want. Mm -hmm. So I had to scrape this track and erase it and add another uh, track of noise. People used to laugh, you know, you are, you are adding noise, you know, whereas other people try to avoid noise. You are feeding <laughs> through a channel noise so that it will, it will match with the rest of the soundtrack. So all these prob problems I had to go through. And another thing was then I exercise a lot of control on my artists even while they are performing, by even while the shot is on. Mm -hmm. So with the sound being recorded synchronously, I couldn't shout to them. I couldn't give them instructions. Mm -hmm. So from my second film onwards, I stopped the synchronous sound business. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> I thought in, in Swayambaram there were other kinds of, of evidence of a documentary sensibility with the the work constantly taking place in the background at the, at the lumber business yes. and this, the location of the streets and all the street activity yes. uh, and also the fact that it's about a social issue in a certain respect oh, yes. and the, the, the black and white photography of, uh, set in the city constantly on the streets. I, I thought that it was very much that kind of a film. Yes. In fact, in Kerala especially, it became very, very, um, very important because this was the first ever time a group absolutely, uh, you know, uh, operating from the outside of the 
or, or the, of the setup mm -hmm. was making a film. Because normally the practice was to go to Madras. When you want to decide to, when you decide to make a film, you board a train to for Madras, uh, meet people, establish the contacts, shoot it inside this uh, studio, mm -hmm. all that. But then here was one film made with actually on location here in Kerala with people who had who who, who have nothing to do with the with the, the, the established film industry. And then, uh, although I used uh, established, some of the artists in the film are, have been quite well established at that time. They mm -hmm. are not they are not new people. Mm -hmm. But then, the way they were used, yes, uh, you know, with, without glamorize, glamorization or um, falling into cliches of the regular cinema, so it was a total um, assault on. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I thought the gentleman wore a little bit of makeup, but. I'm sure no, the gentleman, I, I had given makeup, and actually this is slightly misunderstood also. In the beginning portion, I have given them slight makeup, mm -hmm. both of them. Mm -hmm. um, not in the trip, not in the beginning, mm -hmm. but then in that sequence of their um, um, you know, the, the, the endearments, you know, mm -hmm. where they are together and all that. This actually, this is a whole scene, uh, almost a spoof on the regular commercial cinema, mm -hmm. where I have given them wantedly makeup, mm -hmm. which has been misunderstood as some, something of a mistake. It was oh, not really? So. It was not so. So I misunderstood it also. Yes, yes. But, but then it is uh, possible because when you, when you make, make your first film and these ideas, people don't immediately accept. Mm -hmm. Because it, probably in black and white, it, it, it was a bit too evident. Mm -hmm. Not much problem, mm -hmm. color it wouldn't have been noticed mm -hmm. uh, as a mistake. But then here in black and white, little, little makeup looks a little overdone, you know. Mm -hmm. That may be the reason. On the other hand, the bus sequence at the beginning had a definite documentary feeling because of all that sort of empty narrative space yeah. where, where the, the, the texture and the, the sense of place was much more important than the storyline. Exactly. And uh, there, were, there were no dialogues, I think, in the, the bus sequence, were there? No. It's a beautiful sequence. Well, the whole film is <laughs> lovely. I really <laughs> Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you. I had to have someone explain to me about Swayamvaram and the uh -huh. eight kinds of marriage or something like this. Uh, Swayamvaram, actually, <laughs> it means, uh, actually, basically, it means one's choice, one's own choice. Uh -huh. So you, in, in, in the beginning, these the two, to the two of them, they had made a choice to live together. Mm -hmm. At the end also, she is left at a point when she has to make a choice mm -hmm. about whether to face the life as it is. Mm -hmm. And here obviously she is choosing that life. You know, she wants to, she is making this choice mm -hmm. of living, facing life, you know, instead of turning away from it or taking mm -hmm. refuge under somebody's help. Mm -hmm. So let's move on then. After Swayambaram, you made some more documentaries, did you? After uh, Swayambaram, I made a, f a couple of documentaries. One was on the um, cultural past of Kerala. Mm -hmm. It was called Past in Perspective. Mm -hmm. And then another film on, uh, on a great Kathakali artist. He had, even at that time, he was 92 years old when I was shooting this film. Who incidentally, he also had, uh, you know, his some years of his childhood of training spent in my grandfather's oh. uh, training. Um, That's right, you have background in the Katakali. Yes, uh, yes. Movement. He used to be associated with our troop. What was the name of this film? Uh, it was Guru Changanur. Okay. He's the name of the uh, Guru. Guru you know? mm -hmm. uh, that these two films I did between Swayamaram and uh, Kudiyatam. Mm -hmm. This is a very traditional subject for Indian documentary, sort of cultural preservation, the cultural past, and did, were you, um, these were both produced in Kerala for yes, the, for the yes. state? No, actually these, both the films were produced for the government of India, I mean for the Films Division. Films Division? Yes. And so once again you felt that you were being forced to compromise to a certain extent? No, not here, this, I, I loved making these films. Mm -hmm because uh, these were subjects very close to me. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, um, as the research part, when I went to see this grand old man, 
He recognized me and he hugged me and said, "Oh, my own child, you know, you, <laughs> you are so close to each other." And uh -huh. but he was an emotional kind of thing. Uh -huh. So I enjoyed making that film, uh -huh. and um, I think it has come out well, even as a documentary. Uh -huh. And the day when we finished the shooting, again he wouldn't leave me. He would hug me like this, and <laughs> so I, I enjoyed making those mm -hmm. two films. It's funny that uh, the people. And who from that time onwards. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, now I will not waste my time or energy on subjects which I am not interested in. Like family so, planning. <laughs> uh, such subjects I said I won't do any more films. So, although there has been a lot of pressure up to that time, but then from that time, I have been trying to make films only on subjects which I like. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, almost I became, uh, came to specialize in uh, films on culture. So, I made a few. Um, one was on Yakshagana. Yes, that's the one uh, I was happy to see the only Did one you see it? yes oh. the films division showed it to me oh i see i like that film it's lovely yes i, I really like appreciated the visual yes. quality the way you used long takes yes i mean it showed much more respect for the actual theater part of it than the kind of uh, my approach to uh, making a film on a, a, a traditional art like that i never impose myself on the film mm -hmm. because i look at um, the, the the performing art with respect. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't want to impo impose my medium on that. No, here I am I'm a, I'm subservient to that mm -hmm. that art. This is my approach. This was clear. It was worked very well. <laughs> um, thank you. The only awkward part in it, if you'll forgive me for mentioning, it was yes. this terrible interview. Yes, I agree. I agree. Because uh, you know, I had to keep the interview because not be not because somebody uh, uh, sort of uh, pressured me into it not mm -hmm. because of that, but then he's the man who did so much for the revival mm -hmm. of this art form. Mm -hmm. It is terrible, I know, then of course he couldn't speak properly and mm -hmm. uh, I agree. <laughs> yes, I, I wondered though whether they had imposed that on you. Uh, no, no, nobody yeah. did, nobody did. Well, I thought it was, it was obligatory to have him uh, featured there. Well, he was okay. The interviewer was, was, was even worse, actually. I don't know who he was. You are talking about Yashagana. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yes, I, I hope, I ah, hope yes. it's no friend you're of right. yours. You are right, <laughs> you are right, you are right. But then both of them, <laughs> both of them have done so much to the revival of the art. Have they? I wanted them to be, at, for, at least for record purpose, to be there in the film. Mm -hmm. There was no other way of showing them. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Were you Even conscious in that film of working with trying to revise the way narration is done in Indian documentary? I. I think in the films division, in the older films, narration, voiceover narration is really the curse. Yes. It's uh, appalling, the kind yes. of things they used to do. Were you conscious? I, I felt that you were much more restrained with yes. voiceover than... Yes. Yes. Because as I said, I didn't want, while the, the, the thing is there on, you know, I didn't want any intrusion by this commentator. commentator mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> um, the voiceover as an attack on <laughs> what it then I did a film on um, Chola Heritage. Yes. Again, uh, that is this is basically uh, yes, basically on the architecture, painting, and um, that. What region are the Cholas? From? This actually they are from the south, uh -huh. uh, mostly in the Tamil Nadu area. Uh -huh. And uh, I again I enjoyed making that film. Uh -huh. And. Um, did you and, uh, because what happens is a subject like this immediately you come to learn about your past. Mm -hmm. You read about them. You know there is no otherwise you wouldn't do these things. You know you your professional demands are something else. So you go into it. You read whatever is available on the theme, on the period. What what the past was like. And I learned a lot of things about our own culture because it was the Cholas who who, who took the the Hindu religion to the Balinese islands to the east, you know, mm -hmm. and to Ceylon. All these areas, they, 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 had, they had a big empire. Mm -hmm. And um, what actually the Dravidian culture meant and all these things, a lot of information on, mm -hmm. on our life. It was like looking at yourself, mm -hmm. deep into yourself. So, film is just a part of the experience, mm -hmm. not the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So this film required a lot of images of graphics and yes. drawings and photographs? Or? No, I didn't use any graphics. Actually, I went to the locales and shot. Okay. Yes. So it's more ar architectural? More architectural. And then uh -huh. more and more, a lot of sculptures. Uh -huh. Beautiful bronzes of the period. Because uh -huh. the Chola bronzes are the greatest, I think, in the Indian art. 
of our heritage. Chola brands are unparalleled. Mm -hmm. Unparalleled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then I made a film on uh, an art form in, in Kerala itself again uh, called Krishna Natam. <coughs> Uh, That's 1982, <coughs> according to my list. I will check. Mm -hmm. Krishnatam again is an art form very close to Kathakali. Mm -hmm. But then, <coughs> different in the sense it uses mass. <coughs> and uh, this used to be performed only in one temple in Kerala. Mm -hmm. Never taken out of the presence of the temple. <coughs> this was also for films division? <coughs> yes. This, uh, please try to see it. Uh, this is again a film which I like. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, the films I made on subjects of arts and things like that, <coughs> I like them. Did you have a particular attitude towards synchronous and direct sound in these documentaries? I wondered when I saw Yakshagana whether it was... <coughs> it's purely synchronous sound. Yes. yes. Yakshagana, this film, wherever the spoken word is there with the performance. I used it as such. You, you would think it would be automatic that it was important for a performing art, and yet so many of these films about performing arts use uh, dubbed and post-synchronized I think sound. it's very wrong to do that. It's horrible. I think it's horrible. Yeah, but one they, should not do that. They do it all the time. No, one should not do that. Mm -hmm. uh, one may organize a performance. Mm -hmm. One may not be able to go and shoot where it really occurs. Mm -hmm. Is that what you had to do for these? Yes, some people, actually I have done like that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> because you may have to shoot, you have to change your angle. You know, I, I do not want the performance to be over. You know, I don't have that kind of uh, equipment mm -hmm. where you shoot with three, four cameras on a different side. Yes. I cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the amount they give to make the film, you have to be very, very frugal mm -hmm. <laughs> and very, very, very austere in your approach. But then all the same, you have to catch what is essential about it. You, what you are trying to do is not a complete record of the performance, not a complete idea about the whole thing, but then uh, some kind of initiation into it. Uh, to, to probably for those who want to see, uh, learn more about it, this will work as a kind of primer. This is mm -hmm. the only idea. Mm -hmm. And I, I should not, I also realize that I should not give a complete text of something, you know, you read out the whole thing mm -hmm. <laughs> on the soundtrack and then try to educate the audience like that. That also is not the idea. Mm -hmm. But then that, I could bring, my, uh, you know, you know uh, assume that kind of an attitude only when, by that time, I had been known and I had been accepted as uh, uh, someone who could not be just brushed as die aside, you know. So the film division <coughs> was beginning to appreciate some of these independent directors. Exactly, exactly. This is it. The, the attitudes change once you um, establish yourself as as a genuine filmmaker and then once you have earned a name or <laughs> some recognition, mm -hmm. then, you will, then they will listen to you. That's how the government works, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For somebody unknown, it's very difficult. So we passed over uh, one feature, Kodayatam, which Kodayatam. I have not seen, unfortunately. I see, I see. Kodayatam is very important to see, actually. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to the National Film Archive... They will show me. They will show you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does it fit into this yes, chronology? Yes, very much. In fact, <coughs> again, that's a film uh, which has been influenced by a documentary, I would say, because a lot of parts of the feature film have incorporated these uh, festivals and things like that into the film. Mm -hmm. Again, at that I shoot while shooting that film, uh, I could not really afford <coughs> to, to assemble a crew to go and shoot at one of the festivals here. So, most of the festival scenes you see in the film are shot by me. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, in that film. Um, starting with the opening scene. And, uh, with a, a two-man crew? Uh, yes. Some, someone doing some the sound and you doing the camera? Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, this film was shot with practically no money. Um, but then we thought we had to make this film because, um, and then a lot of friends came, advanced money, the cooperative had 
May the previous film was successful, but then the, all that money was put into buying equipment. By that time, we, we had bought a camera. Mm -hmm. So we had a recorder. So you not only camera, had a Nagra, you had Nagra a camera. camera. <laughs> Second hand camera. So uh, with the zoom lens and all that. <laughs> Big acquisition. So this film again, you know, the, it is interesting. I think you would like it for a simple reason that there I adopted a, a, a style where when you watch the film, it wouldn't look like somebody interfered with anything. Mm -hmm. and it, would, it would look like, you know, things are just there like that. I just, uh, it was structured in such a way that it was all, you know, made to look like it was just left there like that. And there is a kind of static electricity working. It works. Like, I say, because that whole film is structured like, like a festival, in, you know, held in a temple mm -hmm. in, in the village. <laughs> the structure of the film is that. So, what is special about the festivals in the village is that when you everybody goes to see the festival, and in fact, what is the spectacle? The spectacle is themselves. Mm -hmm. now they constitute the spectacle. Each one going in and then that together, the, that conglomeration of the of the humanity there, that is the festival. And you don't find any external development, but there is a development from the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, in the festival, the manifestation of that is the is the fireworks at the end, you know, the thing going up and mm -hmm. then you see the flowering up in the sky. So in the same way, the, 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 the emotional climax of the film is worked like that in the film also, I mean, mm -hmm. in the story also. Mm -hmm. So it will be interesting for you to watch it. And yeah. then there are a lot of uh, cultural things about Kerala, our life, you will become aware of. Because I am using the, this, um, the, the inventors of culture, you know, mm -hmm. to get into the psyche of the people who watch it. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It's a very simple mm -hmm. looking film. Very simple looking film. And mm -hmm. that has been my most, most popular film also. Oh, really? Yes. You know, there's another film by another director uh, that I saw in this retrospective that made me think a lot about these spectacles and uh, pageants. Um, Nirmalayam, is that it? Nirmalayam, Nirmalayam. But he had a much more ambivalent attitude towards them than you. I mean, you see the the spectacles being used for tourism, for example, and you see the, the traditions dying out in that film. Um, what is your attitude towards this? No, no, actually, uh, this becomes an element of my, 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 my uh, actually, my, this, the, 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 the cultural um, things. They, they are no, I, I am not using them as in a, in a very exhibitionistic form, no, mm -hmm. not as some, some not as exhibits mm -hmm. for somebody to look at its exotic quality. That's mm -hmm. not my approach. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is this is a part of my um, uh, dramatic form. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm using that. Mm -hmm. In fact, more to get at the people, mm -hmm. because you 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 arouse a kind of uh, cultural uh, empathy, mm -hmm. and then. Without even you are realizing, it, it gets into you. It is so close to you. The mm -hmm. things that you are talking about, it is. It is not as uh, as a decoration, but as something as a part of the structure, as the fiber. You know, as a part of its. It, that itself is the fiber of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. F fiber and fabric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's much more at the center of a society than just. Yes, you know, it's, it's not something external to it. Mm -hmm. That's why I said the film itself is structured as a. In, in the form of a timber festival. Okay, so we've passed Chola Heritage. There were four years in there bef between your two features, Kodiyatam and Elepatayam, weren't there? Yes. In which you made these. Yes. In fact, we between the first feature and the second feature also, though, there were five years. So Emiram was made in 72. Right. And um, Kodiyatam was made in 77. So, so there were five years in between. You made a lot of documentaries. Yeah, I made a lot of documentaries. Yes. And yet, the, <coughs> it's interesting that the uh, the writing that has been done about your career never discusses those ever. <laughs> uh, it's funny. There's this absence. Uh, so then we get to Elipatayan, uh, and three years later, Mukamakam, and then two years later, Anantaram. Are there also documentaries coming among these, no, these actually features? Normally, between, between uh, two feature films, 
I make a few couple of uh, mm -hmm. documentaries. Mm -hmm. um, but then my problem is that when I am working on a film, mm -hmm. I don't take up another work. Mm -hmm. Even a documentary, I don't take up. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot. You know. mm -hmm. So I have been declining films. Mm -hmm. And uh, the result was that I, uh, after a film, I am now without work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, of course, I have uh, been contracted to make a film for the television. Oh yeah, regular film. You know, they have been asking to asking me to make a serial. I said I am not interested. Now uh, the offer has come in the form of a feature film. You make it in your language, whichever we we like. Blank really? set. You make a feature film. I said yes. But I am not ready yet to make the film, uh -huh. so I am just uh, thinking about it. <laughs> Unless I am ready, I wouldn't start. Unless I am happy about the project, I wouldn't start. Elipathyam <coughs> um, I saw, and Anantaram I saw, but, oh, how nice. Are you going to go to the next Thank you. Um, Mukamaka, I haven't seen, but I've only read the script. But it seems to me of these these three features, it's probably the closest to your social concerns and your documentary background in a certain way, since it deals with history and it deals with the political backdrop to this individual to a certain extent. I, I wish you could see um, face to face. If I, I could, if I could see you somewhere, because there was a screening arranged in, in, during the festival. Somebody, somebody specifically asked Donald Ritchie and the Tadavu Sato. They were very particular to see the film, and I couldn't. I did not know that you were interested in. Well, I will see it in Pune. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have print. They have print. <coughs> These three films, you know, in, in fact, uh, I think all my five films, which are films, have value as social documents. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there is no effort at fictionalizing reality, you know, mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. effort at that. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they have, at, at one level, they, each film has a um, has its support from the social system and it is resting on the social system, what it is referring to. Mm -hmm. It's also and in Mukamukha especially, it, uh, references are very, very accurately done. Mm -hmm. Very accurately, the references are very accurate. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, that's uh, borne it's out by the way there was such a reaction to mm. the film. I mean, if it Even today, they are so angry and yeah. for no reason actually. Yes, I thought it was a very valuable critique of uh, the film. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I thought your film was a very valuable critique of this kind of political trajectory that has happened over the last uh, yes, couple of generations. Exactly. Yes, but and it must have been true, otherwise there wouldn't have been such a reaction, it seems to me. I think so. I think the the, the reaction is justified. Mm -hmm. <laughs> While I was very unhappy about the way they were uh, tirading against it, mm -hmm. I thought it is it, it is in a way right. That's mm -hmm. right reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of uh, well, ignoring it. That's true, but it seems to me your criticism was sympathetic. I mean, it was it was the criticism of a friend rather than a criticism of a. It an was enemy. not even actually. It was I was not even criticizing in, in the film. It mm -hmm. is more in the nature of a an exploration, probing, mm -hmm. wanting to know what is happening. Mm -hmm. This is the film. This, mm -hmm. There is no condemnation of anything. Well, because it's basically, uh -huh. the problem is that nobody wants to examine a thing. Yeah. You know, it has to be kept sacred and then, you know, uh, uh -huh. it becomes holy cow, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. And that is the attitude. Uh -huh. That has created the problem. It is not, there is no straight condemnation of anything in the film. But except that there is a, the pervading feeling is one of uh, disappointment, Disillusionment, that is there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that is a fact. Oh, is sure. Nothing, nothing yeah. false about it. Yeah. I thought one or two of the characters in the second half, 
represent factionalism and and uh, com compromise. And, yes, uh, it is there. It's a fact. You know, not, yes. nothing is distorted there. Yes, nothing is distorted. But then, for that matter, there is some uh, uh, one one so the same person who opposed uh, Mukha Mukha and wrote against it. He has written a piece in their party uh, paper. Mm -hmm against the film Repentance. He said this is a reactionary film, it's a revisionist film. Can you imagine it? Isn't it scandalous? It's completely scandalous. It is. Yes. They, they, are, they are pleading for something like the this Stalinist the, era. This is the party that's aligned to the Soviets? Is yes. It? No, this is the... Both okay. the parties are aligned to Soviet. This is the Marxist party. This is the CPM? CPM. The one that's in yes, power? It's incredible. It's yeah. incredible. That is shocking. Yes, very shocking. I was shocked to see that. I'm keeping a cutting now. <laughs> Sorry? I'm keeping a cutting of this <laughs> piece. <laughs> when they can talk so freely about their own uh, flaws and things like that, and we think that this is <laughs> this revision is too much. It's too the much. The principle of self-criticism is, is so important. It's accepted everywhere. Yeah. Even in a very regimented society, it is accepted. Mm -hmm. And uh, a whole world is welcoming it, and mm -hmm. then. The <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, have we missed any? <coughs> you talked about Krishna Natan. Have we missed any other documentaries that you've made recently? Yes, the last one mm, where I did not direct uh, in, in the strict sense was the film on the Ganges. Oh, right. Uh, Ganga. This was after Mukhamakam? After Mukhamakam. Yes, uh, before the release of Mukhamakam. Mm -hmm. This friend of mine uh, who lives in Paris, who is a painter, Vishwanathan. Mm -hmm. He came with the idea of making a film on the Ganges, on the mm -hmm. river Ganges. Mm -hmm. So, with him I have made uh, two films before. And this is not commissioned or anything, just for the joy of it we do it. So, the first film we did together was a film on, on the, he, he being a painter, he was interested in doing a film on, uh, we have this traditional uh, practice of uh, uh, columns, you know, columns and columns. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do, how do I translate it? You, with uh, using various kinds of powders in front of a house. Uh, that is one one form of it. Yeah. it is, this is much more uh, than that. Uh, it is almost uh, in some forms. It it is ritualistic mm -hmm. uh, in its character, in its use, in different forms. So it's called a column. And, um, a column is in the in the very uh, lower strata. It is called a column. But then as it rises in stature and purpose, it becomes a Padmam. Mm -hmm. They use a different varieties of powders, black, red, um, white, this color. I don't know whether you have seen any. At the festival venue, they had a column of the... Oh, yes. yes. That is made of flowers. Yes. This one is not made of flowers. It's it made is with this one is made with the various powders. And there are various uh, forms of it. So we made a film on that, too, and I shot. Uh, on all these occasions, I have been shooting it. I have been mm -hmm. working as a cameraman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have been operating the camera on all these films. That is one. Another we did together was on the sands of India. Sands means in the shores of India. Mm -hmm. So we traveled all around the coast mm -hmm. of the country and shot a film called, and it was done on Super 8. Oh, really? We traveled for about two months. We had a station wagon. Some one of us, um, most, most of the time I was driving. So we went around it, uh, the whole country, shot this film. That, is, that was for about eight, or eight hours or so. Wow. Yes, he has it still, uh, the copy. Was it sync sound, Super 8? And there was no sound, it silent. was silent. Mm -hmm. And then second time, uh, the third uh, film which we, we made together was this Ganges, the film mm -hmm. on uh, Ganga. And uh, this again took nearly two months for us to travel from the, what do you call it, you call it estuary, where the, yes. the river joins the sea. Mm -hmm. From that point, which is called, uh, the place is called Ganga Sagar. Mm -hmm. From there we traveled up the river, along the coast. We did not travel on the river, but mm -hmm. by the side of the river. Mm -hmm. And uh, covered the life and the uh, river itself, its moods and mm -hmm. things like up to the point, and we traveled up to the mountains, mm -hmm. and we went to the source of the river. Past Rishikesh? Yes, past all that. Past Rishikesh, mm -hmm. past uh, 
uh, Gangotri, we went up to Gomuk. That is the most accessible, the last accessible mm -hmm. um, point of the, of the river source. We went up to that and showed it. And we ended, uh, the, the film ends there. Oh. Yes. How long is it? Two hours, 25 minutes. Is it being circulated or is this a... Yes, the, the print, uh, you may be able to see this print in Delhi. Mm -hmm. There is one print available with Mr. Marthanda Singh. Mm -hmm. He is the joint director of the... There is an organization called INDAC for preservation of uh, culture, heritage and our, all this. So if you contact them in Delhi, they mm -hmm. may be able to show you this film. I think it's worth seeing. And there, there is no commentary used in the film. Yeah. It's a basically an impressionistic film, uh -huh. and uh, various modes of it. And so I'm very happy about uh, the photography I did uh -huh. for it. And I mean, it is basically that only. Nothing else. There is it no must commentary. It must have been like a holiday, was it? <laughs> <laughs> you like it, uh, I hope. Mm -hmm. Is is there? There must be sound location sound. Yeah, I have used uh, again here. I have used. Uh, collected all sounds on while we were traveling, whatever mm -hmm. uh, sound we found useful, we recorded on location. Mm -hmm. Nothing is done uh, afterwards. Mm -hmm. And all that is used in the film. And uh, it, it, it will look like a spiritual voyage mm -hmm. uh, in search of the source. And, and the Ganga is very, very much uh, an important element in mm -hmm. our lives in India, you know. Yeah, it's very true. much a part of our culture. Even when somebody dies here, in, out, far out in Kerala, mm -hmm. There will be a bottle of uh, Ganga water kept. So at mm -hmm. the moment when he is about to die and he know that he is going to die, somebody has to uh, trickle one or two drops of Ganga water into his mouth. So it is so much linked with our religion. Mm -hmm. And in, even from the past, people when, once they have renounced, they have become old. You know, this is a old practice. They renounce everything and they set out to to to, to Benares. Mm -hmm. Benares is the uh, that is the god of the Shiva. That means uh, one of destruction and, and the, mm -hmm. the, the final thing. So it is almost a uh, journey towards your death, which you opt and accept mm -hmm. with grace and with absolute renunciation. So there are a lot of associations with Ganga in our life. So this film is... <laughs> has the film had a good reception? It has won ma three major international grand prizes. Oh. It just uh, won the grand prize of the Cinema du Real in, in France. Oh, yeah. That's what you learn in Paris, you know? Yes. Cinema, cinema du Real. Du 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 real. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You know, just won the grand prize there. And then it in, in Florence, uh, again a grand prize in the Florence mm -hmm. Short Film Festival. The third grand prize in, the, in a festival in uh, Spain. Mm -hmm. And it has been shown all around the world. Last year it was in Berlin. It was shown in the Forum. And uh, it's quite a well-known film. Mm -hmm. And in India, where is it being shown? Oh, we, we, uh, I had proposed this film to be shown here in this festival. Mm -hmm. But they had the usual problem with the yeah. length of documentary yeah, films? Yeah, and then they had a theme that uh, you know, the films shown in the documentary session had to be against apartheid and war and all that. So it, this did not fit into any of those things. That You're that so narrow-minded about this. Absolutely. The same thing happened with Bombay, our city, didn't it? Yes. Two years ago or so. Yes, too bad. There could be a separate section when there, there is an important film. You know, I don't know, I don't know why. What, what should stop you from showing it? It's such an artificial this is, distinction. This is a very, very, very uh, bureaucratic way of looking at things. Terrible. And I did not want to invite attention to myself saying, making a statement about it, so I kept quiet. Well, it's symptomatic of this problem that the press release of, of, this, this, uh, of Odessa and all these other people called attention to, isn't it? The, yes. the, lack, the lack of importance given to documentary and non-feature films yes. at the festival. Yes. I mean, the fact that they don't subtitle them. This is one thing I talked about that day. Terrible. Yeah. I was, I did not know this was going to be in store. Mm -hmm. So, so it's absolute carelessness about mm -hmm. the short film. Something has to be done. It may also be political in the sense that films division likes their monopoly, and um, the government doesn't want to encourage independent uh, documentaries since that can tend to have uh, social implications. I mean, they must be. Im it 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 may not be purposeful. No. No, no. Because at least this is one good thing about this country. You know, there is um, no one person sits there and decides things for others. No, no. Actually, there have been many instances of 
some films being refused as certificate by the censor board and then later after a lot of pressure some certificate is gained and finally it goes on to win there have been many instances of films going on to win the national best prize mm -hmm, mm -hmm. see this it depends on the individual service Fortunately, they have independent juries for these prizes. Absolutely, absolutely. And no mm. jury normally, you know, if, if the prize is, if it is a wrong decision, it depends on the constitution of the jury and the character of the jury. Mm -hmm. More than any, you know, campaigning for anything. Mm -hmm. now, or somebody is uh, lobbying for something. It's not that. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, you, you uh, there can be error of judgment, you know. Uh, no. So it's not somebody trying to influence the others. That way it is good, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So will this encourage you to make more films of this nature, or you mean the Ganga success? Like that. Yes, uh, I would like to do. In fact, now he has a plan to make a film on fire, <laughs> which again uh, there are a lot of associations with. Yes. Suddenly, it means a lot of things. So we may make it uh, one day. Okay, well, I think we've covered chronologically <laughs> um, the basic items. Would you say that one analysis of your evolution that I read talked about you're moving more and more towards examination of individual consciousness and subjectivity uh, and away from um, social issues as they're traditionally conceived would you i think that's certain social issues no again uh, most of the time the problem is that people look at uh, uh, very obvious direct almost propagandist type of treatment as social you know why don't we just wait till he disappears <laughs> Okay, so start again. No, most of the time, no, this is very commonly, people look at very direct and obvious and plain uh, treatment of subjects of social uh, issues as something socially committed and socially relevant, which I think is a very wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And after all, what is society? Mm -hmm. It is composed of individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, how can you ignore the individual and talk about the society? Mm -hmm. I think it will be a denial of the society itself to ignore the individual. Mm -hmm. And it will be like forget about the trees and uh, look at the woods, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, my, my, my concentration of the individual is not a negation of the society. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look at Elipaza, you will know what I am yes. talking about. Yes. There it says, the individual loses the, the, the very, very, very um, entity of the individual is questioned when he stops reacting with the rest of the society. Because if you remember in Ilpatayam, Ratra, mm -hmm. the film at a, at a very um, exterior level, at a very physical level, it talks about sharing. Mm -hmm. It's okay, you know, it, it's about sharing at, at one level because this man refuses to share his properties with the elder sister or the one who, for whom there is a proposal for marriage mm -hmm. and uh, naturally after the marriage the property has to be equally divided amongst the rightful heirs. Mm -hmm. He refuses because once it is shared then he cannot live like he is doing now. Mm -hmm. So he has to be, he will be put to a lot of difficulties. So that is at the very physical level and it's at a very factual and uh, mm -hmm. uh, realistic level. Right. right. But then if you look at it again uh, further, it is about sharing your your love, sharing your anxieties, sharing your fears, mm -hmm. sharing uh, sharing you know, uh, you know your 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 you know, everything that that a human life you know which goes to make human life worth its uh, uh, living. Mm -hmm. So here, this man, the moment he he slowly he starts. Uh, cutting away his relation with society, you know, because in in his case it is not a willful act, but then it is some almost uh, looks like inevitable, and it, it's a, there is a lot of pathos about the situation, uh, because in his inability to 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 face up to the situation, 
he tries to pretend that th the situation doesn't exist. So in the process, he gets slowly alienated from the society. And he, at, and he reaches a point where whether he is dead or alive, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. you know, either to himself or to the rest of the society. So that is the treatment. So basically, although it is concerned and always uh, showing the individual his anxieties, his uh, problems, but then the, the, the focus is not actually on him, but it is on the society which uh, is the lack of a social interaction. Mm -hmm. you know? I learned a lot about the sort of traditional functioning of feudal society in Kerala from that film, the way the house is structured. And, and the way the harvest goes on of the, the coconuts and everything. I thought, no, in fact, uh, that, that in that film, I have, sh I have shown uh, the, 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 the rice, the paddy that is harvested and stored in, the, in which they are threading and uh, separating uh, the, that uh, operation. There, the, the paddy that is harvested and kept there is just it's sufficient for a family of three members mm -hmm. to live for one year. Mm -hmm. That it cannot be less. It, if it is more, it is excess. Mm -hmm. So same way, the coconuts cut. You know that can sustain. Every four to five days, you know, you cut the coconuts. That sustains you for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So it, it is just enough for them to 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 be living like that. Mm -hmm. Any small disturbance will upset the whole thing. So when the thieves come, yes. this is why there's such <laughs> yes. a, a crisis. Yes. It's really very clear the way it's all worked out. Uh, I, w I want to make sure I have the name of the, the man you did Ganga with because... Uh, Vishwanathan. Vish Vishwanathan. Uh, did you get my folder? I'll give you if you haven't got it. Um, I got the folder that came with Anantaram. Yes, it is there. It is oh. mentioned there. Okay. Yes. Good. So we've been talking at least an hour, haven't we? So it's time now. We've covered a lot of territory. I hope so. <laughs> I think so. So, um, I don't think there was anything else I wanted to come to. Um, do you f feel you have anything you want to add just about this whole general area of, of uh, documentary production in, in India? It seems that the independent movement in documentary in India is making some progress, but it's still very difficult, isn't it? No, the problem is, you know, when you make a film, how, how will you get your, at least, in, uh, investment back? This is a problem. Mm -hmm. because otherwise, you have to be immensely rich. Mm -hmm. And even a rich man wouldn't be able to make films like that and then mm -hmm. for, forget about how, mm -hmm. what happens to it. So there's really no alternative distribution system for these films to make your investment back on, At is the it? moment there is nothing, but then now there are interested uh, opinion groups. Mm -hmm. so, you know, there is a, we can, we see the signs of that, film society groups, mm -hmm. some, um, even some highly politicized groups mm -hmm. um, who are highly opinionated themselves. They may like to screen a film, discuss them, and may also contribute to to the to the producer who mm -hmm. has made the film and mm -hmm. and try to support it, mm -hmm. that is possible, mm -hmm. and it is being done also. I think you know John John Abraham did something like that mm -hmm. because his last film was funded by contributions from the public, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people contributing, and of course he also had the help and assistance from the corporation here mm -hmm. uh, by way of advertising uh, facilities, mm -hmm. things like that on credit. But all the same, he, he made a great beginning with mm -hmm. real public funding, you know, making it possible to make a film. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, um, it is wrong to blame the system for not being conducive to making documentaries. Mm -hmm. It is like, um, it would be like saying that, you know, they don't allow me to revolt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need sanctions for that. So when you really want to make um, something which the system will not accept, you have to uh, d uh, find out or devise or create ways and means of making them and showing them. Mm -hmm. So if one has that kind of commitment, nothing can stop him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think so. Well, let's hope that's going to become more and more the case. 
So why don't we stop it there? Sure, thank you. I think that's really been very interesting and productive. Do you want to see a little bit of it through the um, eye? <laughs> I hope you talk sense. <laughs> <laughs>